Hey, it's Dr. Karen Tang. I'm a gynecologist and a minimally invasive GYN surgeon. And I thought today it'd be kind of fun to take you guys behind the scenes in the operating room. And so uh, for anyone who may be having surgery, maybe a little bit nervous about you know what happens on the day of surgery, uh, for those of you who might be pre-med or interested in the medical field, I think it'd be kind of fun to see you know what we do as surgeons and what a patient will go through on a typical uh, surgical day. And so I got my uterus and ovaries scrub cap, which is uh, one of my favorites, and uh, here we go. So the first place we're going to go is the pre-op area, and this is where a patient gets ready for surgery and where we start our day. I'm shooting this with no patients here for privacy, but basically you'll come here and you get into a gown, get an IV placed, and you'll meet the anesthesiologist. They'll go over their own consent for whatever type of anesthesia you'll be having. They'll get an IV in and we'll confirm any uh, last minute questions. We'll check your consent form, your history and physical, and any documentation and answer last minute questions. Now they're not gonna show you this on Grey's Anatomy because it doesn't make for very good TV, but so much of real life surgery is actually safety checklists and protocols to make sure that we're doing the surgery safely and correctly. So once your patient's situated, your paperwork's all done, then the next most important thing is to make sure you're eating and drinking. So especially for medical students who may not have scrubbed before, uh, it's really important to make sure that you're hydrated, that you have something to eat before you go into the OR, because under the hot lights and the mask and the gown and the hats and everything like that, you get really hot and your blood pressure can drop. So we don't want anybody passing out during surgery. So now is the part you've been waiting for, which is going to the OR. So first I'm gonna show you an OR without a patient in it, again, just for patient privacy. So the patient will come into the room on a stretcher and be moved over to the OR bed. We have our OR lights up above to help us see. Our anesthesiologist or nurse anesthetist sits here, administers anesthesia, puts on monitors, and monitors vital signs, gives fluids, blood products as needed, and generally keeps the patient alive and healthy. And finally, we're checking all my equipment to make sure we have everything ready to go. We have a circulating nurse who keeps track of counts and gets us any equipment we need. So once a patient is under anesthesia, we usually position them on the table for whatever surgery they're having done. And then we will prep, meaning um, to cleanse the skin or the vagina or whatever part of the body you're operating on and get the drapes up. And then we're ready to go scrub. So here's our scrub sink. There's a couple of different uh, ways to scrub. There's iodine, chlorhexidine, which is usually what I use. They come in little scrub brushes with the um, uh, solution inside. There are waterless scrubs sometimes. You have to use a, a scrub brush for the first scrub of the day, but then you can use the waterless scrubs for the other scrubs. So when you're scrubbing, you wanna get underneath your nails and all the surfaces of your fingers and arms up to the elbow. And a good scrub should last about two to three minutes. So it takes a whole aura team to do a surgery. So the person who is helping me gown and glove here is the scrub tech or scrub nurse. And they're the ones who also set up the equipment, do safety checks and counts and hand us instruments as we do the surgery. You see my resident in the back and she's setting up the equipment right now and she'll assist. And obviously her job is to learn how to do surgeries and to care for surgical patients. Go. All right, so this is our laparoscopic setup. So for laparoscopic surgery, we use a camera that projects to a screen. So we put our instruments and our camera through trocars that go into the abdomen and we fill the belly with carbon dioxide gas so we can see. Otherwise, if we just put the camera in, then we wouldn't be able to see anything. So uh, gas tubing goes through a trocar, cameras, instruments go in, and that's it. So, so these are some of our instruments. And so we have different electrosurgical instruments. This is for sealing blood vessels and cutting. So up here, you clamp, hit a button to seal the blood vessels and pull a little trigger to cut with a blade. And some instruments that we use to grasp the tissue. And we have also like little scissors and things like that. So basically almost anything that you can use in a traditional surgery we have as laparoscopic instruments, much smaller. So, so let's take a tour inside the body. This is the appendix coming off of the right colon. The pink thing is the fallopian tube next to the white thing, which is the ovary. And this is the sigmoid colon diving down behind the uterus to become the rectum. So once they're done in the OR, you come to the recovery room, which is a wonderful place with very nice nurses, warm blankets, and plenty of medications to keep you nice and comfortable and nausea and pain-free as possible. So anesthesia actually gives you amnesia, which means that you won't remember very much of what happens after surgery. So most surgeons will give you a really detailed instruction sheet that will go over everything you need to know about recovery afterwards. So after the patient is situated in the recovery room, we are putting in prescriptions, orders, dictating the surgery to document, and calling the patient's family member to go over how the surgery went and review instructions. And I actually tend to take a lot of time doing that, and I feel like it makes a really big difference in terms of how a patient recovers and how well they recover. So we talk about things like your diet, 
COVID, activity restrictions, medications and pain medications, how to take them. And for GYN, uh, very important to prevent things like constipation. So we're talking about diet and bowel regimens and exciting stuff like that. And we'll repeat this process for every patient that we operate on. And so I'll usually do between two and four surgeries on a typical day. Now, as a minimally invasive surgeon, almost all of my patients go home the same day, so they don't stay in the hospital. Uh, but depending on the field of surgery that you're in, a lot of times after you're done in the OR, there are rounds to be done on hospitalized patients, you know, other uh, patient care needs uh, for patients who may be in the hospital. And so I, I have it kind of lucky in that, you know, pretty much when I'm done in the OR, I can just go home. So that's it for our behind the scenes look in the OR. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about being a surgeon, about being a patient having surgery, uh, drop them in the comments. I'd love to answer them or make follow-up videos if you guys are interested. Uh, if you haven't already, like and subscribe um, and hope to see you next time. Bye.